Hi there, my name is Cuppy Cates, and welcome back to Spire Clan and Clan Gen in the new office. I know it looks exactly the same. That's because the other room is almost identical to this one, uh, but it's not. I promise this is the new room, and hopefully there'll be a stream probably at some point where I will show you guys the whole office. So look out for that. But until then, we are going to play some Spire Clan. So our clan is extremely small. They have had a hard time regaining their numbers. And there's been a lot of avalanches lately of snowfall, causing cats to get swept away during patrols. Many of the cats think that Jetstar is not a good leader. And we may be looking at a possible rebellion against the clan leader. But for now, all the cats are just trying to survive and hold together, so I don't see that happening right away. Jetstar obviously feels this as she is worried others are judging them. She's doing her best as a very young leader. They've lost so many leaders since the beginning, and this is not really what she asked for, but she is trying her very best. Condor Bite, the deputy and mate of Jetstar, is struggling keeping himself healthy. So right now, Condor Bite has a broken bone, has been hurt for eight moons. Eight moons he's been hurt. That's eight months. We have Monzii, who's been here since Pete Star was in the lead at 105 moons old. He will become an elder very soon, and we all know what that means. Partridge Spark, our medicine cat, has an apprentice tulip paw that we got last time and is counting the poppy seeds. There's a lot of injuries going on right now, and so Partridge Spark is trying her best to make sure there's enough poppy seeds to keep the pain away, but I imagine it's really hard to find those in such a barren land. Even though times have been hard, our clan has suffered and lost so many, they cannot stop trying to survive. If anything, they have to try harder with less cats to go out on patrol. So nothing significant happened during this last patrol. So I went ahead and skipped to the 55th moon, and it looks as though we have a few ceremonies. Spire Clan welcomes Smallbush as a new warrior, honoring their ferocity. The senior medicine cat has thought long and hard about this and names Tulip Paw Tulip Pool. Star Clan gives their blessing and the stars twinkle in celebration. So this is interesting. We have only one page of cats. It's not even a full page. And I said that unless we had more cats, Partridge Spark would have to be exiled when Tulip Paw became a full-blown medicine cat. Well, here we are. We haven't got more cats and Partridge Spark may be exiled. The good news is Big Heart has recovered from their dislocated joint and Smallbush's claw wound has healed. But Crouch Claw is caught breaking the warrior code again. I'm wondering if Crouch Claw is going outside the clan and they possibly found a female from another clan or who is clanless and is trying to be with them. So this, this is a concern that Crouch Claw has broken the warrior code so many times. And Jetstar may have to step in and say something, otherwise she may look like a weak leader. But at the same time, she's not sure. In this world that they live in, can they really follow those old laws? Well, this is not good. It looks like Smallbush, just freshly a warrior, has eaten food that they were supposed to give to the clan. And now, Cindershine is very suspicious of that. Now, Smallbush does have a shameless personality trait, so I'm really not surprised that this happened. However, this is also breaking of the warrior code. So it does seem as though that Jetstar does not have a hold on her clan at all, and cats are misbehaving, breaking the warrior code at every turn. All of the patrols are finished for the evening, and Jetstar has been brought news about how cats are breaking the warrior code. 
and Jetstar isn't sure what to do about it. She knows that the right thing to do would be to reprimand her cats breaking the warrior code and having them do menial tasks as punishment or keeping them in the clan. But instead, she chooses to ignore it. And she goes back to the ways that Pete Star would have done things. And now that Tulip Pool is a full-fledged medicine cat, she is going to say that Partridge Spark must leave. And a lot of the cats are not necessarily happy about this. They understand that she is trying to follow the ways of Pete Star, a great leader. But there are other problems, and they don't understand why this is her first choice. So she will ask Partridge Spark to leave by the following moon. All of the cats of the clan are devastated to see Partridge Spark pack up her things to take a s small store of herbs with her in hopes of surviving. They're all heartbroken and they don't understand, but unfortunately these are the rules of the challenge and we must exile Partridge Spark. And so she will leave with her dignity giving the clan a smile and a nod of appreciation for all of their love and trying to give them hope that she can survive this. And most of them believe her. She's done so much for them. She's healed so many cats. She's given comfort to many of them. And they hope one day that they'll see her again when the snows are melted. It is the next moon and some pretty serious things have happened. The first thing that I noticed, which is pretty severe, Condor Bite and Jetstar have broken up. It appears that even Condor Bite cannot stand next to his leader anymore as a mate and does not support her and her decisions. This is pretty serious. We are getting closer and closer to possibly a rebellion against Jetstar. Stormstrike Pelt is no longer torn, so hopefully they'll be able to help a little more. Rubble Cry misstepped and slipped on a rock, dislocating a joint. That is not good. Polly finds a loner named Herc who wants to join the clan. This is good, so this is an addition to our clan. The loner decides to take on a slightly more clan-like name and is now called Herkpaw. So, Herkpaw must be an apprentice. This is very exciting. I think that now we should look at our relationship stats. Mainly because Condor Bite and Jetstar broke up, I want to see how bad their relationship was and I want to see if it's possible there were some other reasons behind Condor Bite and Jetstar breaking up. Wow, oh my gosh. So Condor Bite now hates Jetstar. Interesting. I wonder if Jetstar is actually the one that broke it off. No, I am sticking to my story. I truly believe that Condor Bite cannot support Jetstar's decisions anymore. And seeing Partridge Spark get exiled, especially since Partridge Spark has been the one to heal Condor Bite, who has been so devastatingly injured for the last eight, probably nine moons now. And so he feels a lot of hate. It makes a lot of sense. After briefly skimming some of the relationships, I cannot see how this clan is working together at all. They have truly fallen apart. They don't know each other. They don't support each other. They don't really like each other. It's kind of chaos. They're really taking a mode of, it's survival, I don't have to like you but if you can help feed me, I'll tolerate you. Perhaps the fact that it's been over four years in this landscape, it's taking its toll. Seeing so many cats die, they don't know how to deal with it. They feel as though any cat could be lost any day and so none of them want to be close to each other anymore. But they still have to eat and so patrols must go on. Herkpa is going to be sent on a 
patrol alone to see if they are capable of surviving. It is now the 57th moon and not much has happened. Condor Bite's broken bone has healed so well that you can't tell it even happened. That is good. So it looks as though Partridge Spark did enough to heal Condor Bite before she left and Tulip Pool was able to continue. So Tulip Pool is still going to be a very good medicine cat, but everyone is still mourning a Partridge Spark being gone. Currently, Condor Bite is a little stressed about organizing patrols. I'm sure that he's been out of sorts because of the injury he's had and now he's back to work. So he's trying to make sure that everything goes accordingly. Jetstar is feeling nervous and she should. A lot of the cats are not happy with her right now. Monzi Eye is being pestered by flies. <laughs> I imagine that if there are any flies surviving, they probably are surrounding any bones and things that are left by the cats, and they may want to seriously think about disposing of their bones a little better. Even though it's cold outside, they may need to start burying their bones. No! A storm descends, sudden and violent, putting an end to any other thoughts but survival. As the cats huddle together, desperately trying to conserve warmth, no one notices that Big Heart has stopped responding. At some point in the storm, their life slips away, and their distraught clanmates are left to carry their body home. So Big Heart did not make it through a blizzard that had suddenly descended upon the patrol. They could not get warm enough through the blazing cold, and now Big Heart is gone to Star Clan. It is the next moon, and the clan is one special cat less. Nothing has really happened other than cats getting healed and sick. Polly has gotten a runny nose. Rubble Cry's dislocated joint has been popped back into place and is feeling much better. Crouch Claw's shock is gone. Tulip Pool's soreness has abated. Another moon. This last moon was filled with violent storms. Luckily, no cats were lost like Big Heart was, but the storms continued. Polly's runny nose is gone. Stormstrike has healed from their bite wound. Stormstrike has made a full recovery from the blood loss they suffered. So that's good. Our clan is still very, very small. Nobody is in a romantic relationship because nobody really likes each other, so no kits are being born. It seems as though the storms are truly devastating all cats, so there are no loners to be found, there are no kitty pets, and suddenly Spire Clan is feeling like they are some of the only few cats left in the world. It is now the 61st moon and a lot has happened. Smallbush was found dead near a Nettle Clan border. So another clan does exist that they know about that has a name and enough cats, and it looks as though Smallbush may have gotten in a tussle with them and lost. Monzi Eye didn't look where they were going and tripped over a small trunk spraining their paw. And then a thorn in Pokey Speckle's paw has been pulled out. Pokey Speckle is not in the clan, y'all, but apparently they had a thorn pulled out. We're just getting little snippets of what's happening with Pokey Speckle outside the clan camp. <laughs> this is not good though, because this could mean that these other cats are getting so desperate for food that they are killing the competition. We need to be careful. Still nothing interesting happening on patrols, but Spire Clan does welcome Herkfur as a new warrior honoring their energy. Monzi Eye can walk and move without pain. Their sprain must have healed. Rubble Cry misstepped and slipped on a rock, dislocating a joint. It is slippery with all the snow and ice. Mossy Light's paw slips on some rocks and they twisted their paw. Goodness, these cats need to be careful of the ice. A few moons have passed with nothing really happening other than the cats just trying to survive in this cold, desolate land. But now we're at the 67th moon and Condor Bite is thinking about retiring. If Condor Bite retires to the Elder Den, we know what that means. We need kits. Jetstar is going to make an announcement. She's very careful about how she makes this announcement. But she says that in order for the clan to survive, kits need to be born. 
She says that she absolutely doesn't want to force anyone to be in a relationship, to have kids. It's a huge responsibility. But if anyone does want to have kids or is thinking about it, she urges them to maybe push the relationship forward. A lot of the cats don't know how they feel about this. That's asking an awful lot, especially since this clan, it's almost like they don't even know each other. But they will think about it. And they do listen to Jetstar's words, even though they still don't really trust that she is a leader worthy of leading. So I went to look at the relationships to see if there was a possibility that anybody could be together. And I will tell you again, these cats really just dislike each other. It's very difficult to find any sort of like. However, there was one, which is going to be kind of shocking. Um, and I had to go to Jetstar to look at what she thought and she wishes she could visit Coyote, Acorn, and Star Clan. And I don't know if y'all remember Coyote Acorn, but she's gone now. So y'all know Crouch Claw, who's been breaking the warrior code a lot, being a disgraced deputy. Well, he has a lot of like for Jetstar, and he feels extremely secure with her. Now, it's platonic, so that's not romance. But I think that Jetstar, more than anything, is going to attempt to see if something can come out of it. They're both loving cats. We have a swiggly line, which is good. Swiggly means compatible. And even though Jetstar is older, she is still capable of having kits. And so they're going to try this out. And we'll have to see if anything comes from that relationship in the next episode. But I hope y'all liked this one in the new office. <laughs> if you did, tickle and poke that like button, subscribe to join our family if you haven't already, and jingle the bell to get notified of when I post episodes. Also, feel free to go in the description below and join Discord if you haven't already or follow me on Twitch. I love you guys. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you next week for more of Spire Clan, and we'll see if this clan can come back or if they possibly disband. Bye!